Hi, my name is Dr. Raphael Equation from Mastery Clinic. Today I wanted to talk about standards of beauty, ratios of beauty, and specifically the golden ratio and how it relates to facial aesthetics. So what is the golden ratio? It was a ratio that was proposed by ancient Greek mathematicians and ever since it was proposed people have tried to link the golden ratio to beauty whether it's uh, art, architecture, um, facial aesthetics and people have often tried to say that Leonardo da Vinci uh, was a proponent of this golden ratio and used it in all of his paintings but it's actually not true uh, there's no clear link to the golden ratio in the Mona Lisa or the Vitruvian Man and the Vitruvian Man was a study in ratios of aesthetics so if Leonardo da Vinci really believed in the golden ratio he probably would have used it in the Vitruvian Man so when did the golden ratio start to get used in facial aesthetics? well it's been used for decades but about 20 years ago there was a plastic surgeon called Mark Hart who developed something called the fire mask which uses the golden ratio to describe the ideal face and it works okay, so a face that adheres to the fine mask, it will look good but the question is, does it actually describe the ideal face? So recently a UK based cosmetic surgeon was in the news for rating Bella Hadid's face as the most attractive face around with a score of 94.35% based on five calculations and Robert Pattinson was rated as the most attractive male around. While I think Bella Hadid looks great, do I think she's the most attractive person around currently? No, I don't. And if I don't think so, there would be others that don't think so. And if there are others that don't think so, that kind of shows the problem with the universal calculator. Looks are highly subjective and ratings vary from person to person. So giving someone such a precise score as 94.35% doesn't make sense and I think such universal calculators do disservice to the individual differences between us all which I think is what actually makes us attractive and if you have a look at the list they're all celebrities so that pretty much means there are there are no better looking people walking the streets than these celebrities which I don't think is true at all if I analyze Bella Hadid's face I think she looks a bit overdone her nose looks a bit too thinned out and her nostrils look to have collapsed in probably from a previous nose job her brow looks a bit too elevated possibly with anti-wrinkle injections or a thread brow lift she's still a great looking woman though and then there's the question of how objective Phi actually is so if we look at the face with all of its different proportions there are literally thousands of combinations that you could come up with with all the different reference points and the golden ratio is bound to fall in line with a few of these so to prove this point here's an artist that used the golden ratio to come up with funny portraits what's considered attractive changes dramatically with time and culture so if we look at Kylie Jenner's case when she said that she was having lip fillers done there was a massive rise in the popularity of lip fillers what's considered attractive in Asia is oftentimes the opposite of what the West considers attractive for example, they consider pale skin attractive and they avoid the sun to avoid a tan. While in the West we're getting spray tans, we're going to solariums, we're going to the beach so we can get more tanned. And then in terms of cosmetic procedures, they often view a white jaw, a masculine jaw as unattractive. So they're getting their jaw slimmed with surgery and anti-wrinkle injections. While in the West we're often adding volume to the jaw with fillers so that we can get them more defined and uh, looking like uh, Angelina Jolie or Margot Robbie. In the 14th century, women were actually plucking their forehead hairs to make their forehead more pronounced. So do I think there's an actual rule to beauty? No, I don't. I think balance is much more important. There might be some basic rules, for example, a wider chin, a wider jaw, being more masculine, but it's hard to believe that there are such precise rules to beauty. I think balance is far more important. So if you have a look at George Clooney's face, unless I told you so, you wouldn't know that he has such thin lips because they fit so well with his face. I think that having a feature that doesn't conform to conventional beauty can actually make us more attractive. For example, when Angelina Jolie first hit the scene with Tomb Raider, she had very big lips for a Caucasian, and that made her unique. But now, so many people are getting lips that big with lip fillers, and it's not so special anymore to have big lips. 
My last point was about facial symmetry. There's a lot of hilarious memes floating around of celebrity faces that have been married to show that symmetry actually makes us less attractive. But I think they're missing the point. I think it more shows that balance is more important than facial symmetry. So they have features on one side of their face that's being balanced out by features on their other side of their face. So the end result is still attractive. But a balanced and symmetrical face is still going to be attractive. So thanks for listening to this week's video. I'd be keen for suggestions on future videos. Uh, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share this video.